So today with us on Stool Talk, it's an honor to have this guest on. I'm in her lane today. Um, you know, me as just getting started um, with the media, the podcast, and she's been on doing her thing. God's been moving um, through her. And, you know, I ran across a couple of her podcast clips and seen her. I was like, man, that's really good. You know, just seeing the word and, you know, the transparency. Uh, but she's not just only a podcaster. She's a uh, producer you know woman of god um and she got a lot of things that's going for her and we just like to thank today's guest miss kirsten lewis how you doing today i'm doing good friend it's it's so good to be here and I, like i was telling you off camera or off stage that surely the lord is going to do something yeah, because yeah. the way that things have been glitching up back, you know, on the, on the communication side and he literally brought it to my remembrance that like you know that this had to happen today. So I'm really excited to get into all of the, you know, shenanigans. Yeah, I'm yeah. to be here. And shout out Jordan Alexa. Shout out Nick too as well. Oh like, yeah. I love me some Jordan. Home. Yeah, they two amazing, phenomenal creators, man and woman. Of God, man, you know, I I just love them. So how did all this get started with you and social media and, and just having your ministry go rapid? Did you grow up um in ministry? Did you grow up with family in ministry? Like what did church and Christianity and faith, what did all that look like with you growing up? Jesus. So hilariously enough, I, my parents really weren't big on the like church scene. They did know God. They did love God, but it was, you know, good old grandma. It was good old grandma that like, you know, made sure that she hauled us off every Sunday. I was literally the only soprano, youngest soprano out of 20 adult altos in the church choir. My grandma made sure that we were involved in some kind of way in the church. And and I was raised missionary Baptist. So all, right. all of all of my my roots were stemmed there. And thanks to my grandma, you know, she she's the one that really got me rooted in the word of God. And so literally once I got older, it was hard for me to, you know, separate from that knowledge. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got started. Yeah. What does family mean to you? Oh, man, I'm literally at my parents' house right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because uh, family is, is literally the most important thing to me in this season. Be I often say this, but I say it in my head. I don't think I say it out loud as often, but family is the only people that have seen you in and out, up and down, all over the place and have chosen to consistently love you. You know what I'm saying? It's it's such a level of unconditional love that comes from family that don't come from nobody else. Because, you know, friends can drop you at a dime, but your family, they have seen me in all stages of life before, you know, the 13K, before uh, the platforms, the book, the, the career changes. They've seen me since I was a kid yeah. and they've still chosen to love me. And so there is no greater place, no um, saner place in the world oddly enough than to be around a consistent group of people who will love you no matter who you are or where you go. Wow. It's just a way that you be putting them words and, and, and you have <laughs> to pray, uh, you know, the voice and God and Holy Spirit gives you the way that you, you speak. And what I love about you um, is the transparency, even when you oh. are on your pod, because some people, they hold back on mm. yours. Uh, uh, you don't hold back. You pouring in like, you know, whoever gets to watch or whoever views clips or whether they see the whole show, they're going to see an, an experience. They're going to get an experience with you. Um, what was your first sign of faith? And um, you seeing how God moves and work as you were younger, Um, you know, growing up. When did you see mm -hmm. like, man, God is real. I really see that this is this is real. Um, well, Help me, Holy Ghost. So one memory I always pull on, which was like the biggest miracle in my life was probably when I 
So I'll give two if that's okay. Yeah, so yeah. the first one, I will say the miracle of me giving my life back to Christ, because I talk about it on the podcast from time to time, just I was in a uh, unhealthy relationship. It was going down on me, y'all. And the <laughs> Lord kept like, you know, giving me dreams and signs and stuff that it just wasn't going to work out. And I had to let it go. But in my stubbornness, I chose to hold on to it. And he decided to take it from me. Jesus. <laughs> having flashbacks but I know he was working it out for my good but after that breakup I went through of course like you know the motions of just grieving and all that and trying to find God trying to find myself again but in that process I will say the first time like the first real deal faith move was when my church had gone on this this uh kind of book club situation where they were reading Good Morning Holy Spirit by Mm -hmm. Benny Hinn and When I saw the book, I was like, well, I've never really had a relationship with the Holy Spirit. So what's the harm in reading it and seeing what it's all about? And the way that Benny Hinn talked about how how he was like best friends with the Holy Spirit and how he was a gentleman and how he loved you and how he would like walk you through like life circumstances. I'm like, I need that. That's me. I need that right now. And so I at, at the age of 20. 122 it was before I graduated college I started to dive into the book like heavy and I really started to crave that relationship and so a first sign of faith for me was that one moment I stood on the edge of my bed I want to say correct me if I'm wrong Holy Ghost but I stood on the edge of my bed and I fell down to my knees and I said Holy Spirit I accept you into my life I want you to guide me I want you to lead me into all truth I want you to show me where to go and in that moment, I just sat, I just sat real quiet. And that's like, when I say that's a faith move for me, because I'm always, I'm always spitfire. I'm always trying to figure out what to do next or how should I move or how should I react? And so when I sat still, I think the beautiful part of that revelation is he, he took me back to the middle of my bedroom as a 12 year old or a 13 year old. And I remember in that space, I was just talking to my best friend. That was the most creative I had ever been. And uh, I was talking to my imaginary friend and he was telling me, that's where you left me. And I was like, (laughs) I I, I was in full blown tears because it was a very pure moment for me. It was very pure. And I was just like, I never want, I never want to be that distant from you again. Like, and so that was the first faith move, but I'll say tangibly, like when I say my first real God spoke to me and I obeyed and it turned out right was when I told God I wanted to be debt free before I turned 30. And I kept saying like, you know, take the loan, Lord, take the loan. (laughs) And he And he was telling me at the top of the year and how God deals with me like heavy, heavy is he always tells me whenever I'm about to go down a big transition at the top of nearly every year. And so at the top of 2019, before the pandemic hit, he said, you're going to buy a house. And I said, that's 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 more debt, God. I think I hear you right. And he and he was like, no, like, I need you to buy a house. And I was like, this this is really dumb. But if you say so, I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, I'm going to do it. And so uh, that was painstaking because I've never bought I never bought a house before. And it was yeah, it was an interesting process. But needless to say, I obeyed God. I bought the house. And. Within a within less than a year, I had lived in that house for maybe six months less than six months when he told me you're going to move to Atlanta. And I said, (laughs) this is not adding up Jesus, but here we are. I moved to Atlanta. I was obedient all the way through. And here we are the third year in Atlanta and God starts to deal with me about selling the house. And this is post pandemic. This is recession. Like, you know, I was thinking to myself, I would be lucky to get it back for even like breaking even on the house and lo and behold when I sold it it sold within a week to the uh, first investor and it sold for double and so that's one of the bigger testimonies that I had with God 
when he tells me to do something, and I mentioned I mentioned it in my year in review on the uh, very last episode, but when God asks me to do something, no matter how opposite it feels, how, no matter how upside down it may seem, I'm, I'm learning because I never want to make it seem like I've already mastered it. I still choose like, okay, this don't make no sense, but I know you. <laughs> Yeah. I know you and I trust you. And if he can turn, you know, uh, what is it? Two fish and five loaves of bread to feed a multitude. He can flip a house for yeah. me, for a person that don't know nothing about real estate. And so I'm, I'm excited to see a lot more miracles like that. Yeah. Um, And yeah, yeah, I can really go on and on, but I will say <laughs> that was the very first time. Oh, that first time I, shaking together yeah. and running over. Like he's saying he could trust you with, with what he was saying and you were obedient. How yeah. are you? is staying close to God so you can be able to hear what he's saying and second part is when you mm -hmm. transition to walk um, in your new walk did you have any obstacles or family members looking at you like oh I can't be around you because she's saved or people trying to cast judgment on you and you know just oh man a little signs in tell us about that man I still I still undergo that I do I still <laughs> um I still meet people who admire the spirit on the inside of me like uh they you know they hear the holy ghost they hear like you know how how I talk about him and they and they one moment they're like I want to be close to her because she reminds me of you know of Jesus but then it goes into that well I can't stay too close to her because her convictions are going to start to mesh with mine and and I don't yeah. want you to call out my convictions and it's not necessarily me calling out anybody's conviction it's me living mine out because yeah. one thing that God dealt with me very early on when I rededicated my life to him was how to be consistent in in my in my character one thing that one thing I always say is that can't nobody take your your character away from you. Um, it's the only thing that you can claim, like your name, literally your reputation. And that's one thing that I stand on. Like if I'm convicted by something, I want to make sure that I'm seeing that conviction through behind closed doors and in front of people. And so when I live those convictions out, of course, people kept looking at me sideways, like, who does she think she is? She thinks she better than everybody else. Or you can't, you know, I can't say this around Kirsten because, you know, she, yeah. she, you know, and, and it had nothing to do with me. Like even friends um, that I am, I actually am close with to this day, they often remind me because I can't lie like it, it doesn't seem discouraging because my thing is I want to love you. I yeah. want to be everybody's friend. And so my friend had to encourage me and say, it's it's OK. Sometimes there is a light that shines on the inside of you that starts to expose other people's darkness. And some people aren't ready for that kind of exposure. And not to say that I'm perfect or I got it all together. But one thing I strive for is what I strive for. And my mm -hmm. hope is that, like, you know, people will love me on my journey as I'm trying to love, you know, them on theirs. So that's how I feel about it. I, I choose not to take offense, though. It's kind of like one of those, uh, what did Jesus say? Forgive them for they know not what they do. It's just one of those things. Um, one of the, one of the days I pray that God opens their eyes to see what their journey looks like, yeah. but it, it, it has no, uh, it has no effect on me when I choose to forgive, when I choose yeah. to forgive and, you know, move on. Yeah, because you just letting your light shine and you being obedient. And um, I just get tired of people trying to use our God and our religion and put it in a box and open it up and take it out when it's most useful for them. <laughs> this Christian walk is not for the weak. It ain't like Man. Uh, you know, it is is peaches and cream. We go through trials and tribulations, you know, uh, and, and people just want to be able to have something to say. But if they knew, oh, come and see how good, you know, God is, you know, they can they can experience this, too. And I want them to, you know, to know that God loves you right where you are with yeah. that drink in your hand with that joint in your hand you know laying on the other side of that male or female you know Man. a lot of times people say I'm gonna wait till you know I get right no I want you right as you are come as you are mm -hmm. you know he's the one that really wants you you know he gonna lead a 99 and come get you you know and, and so you you doing right like I struggle with that a little bit because I just was like man lord I'm I'm doing what I'm supposed to do why well, it seemed like it's a bigger spotlight you know on it in the beginning but I started yeah. to see, like you know I I have to let my light shine like you are sowing good seed and they see your fruit your 
fruit is good. So they seeing what you're doing and, and you know, you ain't lying. Like your story ain't lying. It's consistent. So they're going to be able to see it. I, I believe that will bring them closer mm -hmm. to God. You spoke about um a relationship that kind of had you, you know, feeling some type of way and, you know, kind of took you for the turn. Can you speak on uh, unequally yoked and how important Ooh. that is for, you know, people to make sure that they are equally yoked and what signs to look for in the beginning in the process? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> so I, once again, I, I don't claim to know everything about being, you know, equally yoked, unequally yoked. But one of the things that I did notice about my previous relationship, you know, just for some context, I've been single for about seven years in January. It'll be seven years now, but I've learned a lot about me, but I've also learned a lot about what, what, unequally yoked or equally yoked uh, specifically means. And I boil it down to like beliefs, values, um, spiritual values, spiritual beliefs, and um, ultimately what, what you both want out of life. So for example, I'll never forget this conversation that my ex and I had. Now, forgive me, because you know if my ex is watching, just in case I get some details mixed up. So I remember this conversation we had um, and we just had a really in-depth one about how, what we wanted to do within the next year. And I said, I want to travel. I want to travel. I want to go out, you know, and see the world. And his response was kind of like, mm, I think I'd rather just stay at home and play my video game, which is nothing wrong with that. But yeah. that was probably one of the first markers of, okay, so we want two different things out of life. And of course, seeing how the person's character is or their convictions are versus yours, that is a determining factor as well. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So I see, so I see relationships as this uh, beautiful analogy that I learned a couple of years back. It's a house. So of course, in a house, you have about maybe five rooms. And for when you look at the house, there is this beautiful aesthetic. And the outside of the house is like your personality. When people pass by, they see like, oh, I love the bushes. Like, oh, it's so <laughs> neat, neat. You know, I really like the shingles or something like that. And so people see your personality and they, you know, are drawn to that. But only maybe a vetted few make it into the living room. And the living room is the museum of your memories. And that's where you see all your trophies, your family pictures, and, you know, all of the amazing, you know, conglomerate of, just family memories of who you are and who you've been. And yeah. if you don't let, if you let the wrong people into those spaces, they'll start to, you know, mishandle your memories. They'll start to mishandle your traumas. They'll start to mishandle your, your backstory. They'll start to manipulate it. Even if you are, don't vet those people and don't let, you know, you know, well, words, if you let those people in and then all of a sudden you vet them and you see that, okay, there are some few that I can trust in another area of my life. The next room is your kitchen and your, and I call it the kitchen of your creativity. That's where you literally cook it up. That's when you produce. That's when you are your most creative. You like, like I own my own business. So I'm a producer. I do the podcast. I, you know, I have so many hats that I wear um, in different spaces of my life. I'm a singer. And so if I create certain things that certain friends eat off of, you can determine if they're abusing it by what they bring to the table. Do that? Did they bring a dish? Did yeah. they, you know, bring you some connections? Did they bring a friend? Or did they help you do the dishes? Did they help you clean up? Like, you know, or did they just eat your food and leave? So it's kind of like, did they do you have friends that only partake of your creativity and bounce? Or take it home with them and steal it and try to recreate it. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those things. And, and if you get past that phase, then you can head on up to the bathroom. And I consider the bathroom your, um like your image, your body image, because that's where you are the most vulnerable physically. And so when you trust people with who you are physically, it of course breeds a whole nother level of intimacy. And I think that goes without, you know, saying because it's so self-explanatory. But then the last one, and the last one is so sacred to me because it resembles the marriage bed, but the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And not too many people are allowed into your bedroom, you know, except for your, except for your husband and your wife. Because <laughs> the bedroom is undefiled. 
but um but I call it the bedroom of your belief systems and so even with you having your husband your mate your spouse your pair um that person literally has access to tell you or encourage what you believe and if you let the wrong people into those spaces, they'll try to tell you what you should and should not believe. And if you are not strong within yourself and you're not strong in the word of God and you're not strong in the presence of God, you will start to lean on to another person's words and believe what what they tell you to believe. And that's, I think, how I ended up really being in a lot of narcissistic relationships because I started to believe what people said about me rather than believing what God has already said about me. And so- when it comes to being equally yoked versus unequally yoked, it really goes back to remembering what God has said about you. And what did God say about you? Go back to his word. He says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. He said, I made you in my image. He says that you are the head and not the tail. He says that you are above and not beneath. He says all these affirming things. He said, you are his beloved creation. Honey, he tells me all the time that I I am his most prized possession and his most expensive oil. He tells me these things so that I can always hold on to them. So when people that don't know me from a can of paint, know from a hole in the wall, try to tell Mm -hmm. me what they think I am and Mm -hmm. you know just rehearse it back so I think part of knowing knowing who is equally versus unequally is first knowing who you are and the only way you can know that is if you go back to God hopefully that sums it up man that was good you you saying something like you can tell it's in you like um and even how you broke that down to like you said because a lot of times everything come back to the word of god you want to believe some you want to trust in some trust man. in him. that word shall not come back void god is a man that he he never lies god has <laughs> never lied to me yeah yeah he has never lied to me yeah um how was your transition after your baptism which one <laughs> The, the the second one, or you can go to, with both of them. Did you did you start to see? Um, well, the second one will be because you you became um new after you know whatever you went through, you came back and you know rededication going down with the old, coming up with the new. Did mm-hmm. you see God start working um immediately, or was it a process and a journey to you know continue to walk? So the first time I got baptized, I was I think twelve years old. And uh, I didn't know a lick of what being baptized meant. I just remember, you know, my grandma telling me I had to dress up in a robe and you know, <laughs> go down in the water. And so I went and the deacon, you know, dipped me down. And it was hilarious because I thought I was drowning. So I reached up and it like I hugged him, but I was really holding on for dear life. So I didn't know <laughs> what uh, baptism was at 12 for real. Um, I would say when I got baptized by the Holy Spirit, that was in church. Um, when I really wanted to know how, like, you know, being more in depth with like speaking in tongues and like really evidence of like, you know, speaking in tongues that was in the church. And that's when I really started to dive in. It was around the time I really started to dive in his word, what Holy Spirit was saying, his voice versus my voice. And kind of that's when that transition started. But when I decided to get rebaptized this following year, um, I would say that for me was I I started using I used I started to use baptism these days as like a marker a marker for where my life had been and like you said like a rebirth of who I am becoming so it 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 serves as a, a a chapter for me so when's the last time I got baptized it was when I uh officially overcame masturbation and pornography it was it was right around the time I had did this and so whenever I think back on it I'll say yes I'm new because I I have not gone back since then and and that last one is the the video that I seen correct which one is the video you had on black yes yeah okay because I'm asking that just me doing my research you can just see you know, as you came up, something was like, you know, you could see the glory, the kind of glory on you. And you could just tell even in your um, your intimate moment that you had an encounter. 
You know, some people get baptized, they come up just like, okay, you know, whatever. But you can see, you know, when you was coming up, you know, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. And just to see, you know, what God is doing, the little bit that I, you know, do know and that mm -hmm. we speaking now to see how God has just been working. And he's just taking you from glory to glory and he's elevating you and he's just expanding you. Um, yeah. Even, you know, on the social media, was your plans always to, you know, minister, speak, have a podcast or anything? I mean, you you missed thirteen k. Like some people ain't even got a hundred. You got thirteen people that listening and that needs you to be in tune with the word of God that you speaking because there you're needed. Your voice, your ministry to God through you is needed for thirteen thousand plus. Because you know by the time we talking, you might be at fifteen now. You know just because you know God is using you in that thing. Do you feel? Um, like, do you feel, um, how do you feel about it? Like, describe that. What's the feeling? I know 10, 10K was a lot. Now we at 13. So funny thing is I never wanted to do a podcast. I never wanted to be in the public eye. I, I didn't want nothing to do with it because my thing is I never wanted to put myself in a position to be judged by anybody. So when I know, what I know about me is that God has always encouraged me to speak if I if I'm going to use this platform, he always encouraged me to tell folks my business and to speak with a level of vulnerability so yeah. that people can know that it's coming from a real place. Yeah. And so I can only give God the credit for that, because knowing me, I would want to hide. I would want to hide behind some witty ideas. I want to hide behind some jokes or something. And though I, you know, I do got some jokes on me, but it's, <laughs> I would, I would typically hide behind those nuances rather than like availing my scars. Like I do, like I have done in most, in multiple yeah. episodes. So like I said, I did not want to do a podcast, but I kept hearing earlier, earlier this year, or earlier last year, I kept hearing this, this um phrase, like stop playing with me. And that was around the time that, no matter where I was, whether in the church scene, in the professional scene, I just I kept feeling like people were underestimating me or like, you know, when people try to put you in this box or try to like, you know, not necessarily sun you. But I feel like there was so much in me that people weren't seeing. Yeah. And I kept hearing, like, stop playing with me, stop playing with me. But lo and behold, I realized it was me. <laughs> it was mm. me. I needed to stop playing with me. I needed to uh, grow in my confidence. I needed to understand the power that I have and the value that I add to, to spaces um, before I even look for anybody else for validation. And so when I kept hearing it, I pitched it to my friend originally because I was like, you you know, what you think? You go ahead. You, you can go ahead. Take it off, off of me real quick. Mm -hmm. But then the Lord was like, you know, dealing with me. And so that's when I said, I'm going to just I'm going to just do like a little diary. I'm going to just put it out there and I'm going to use it as a mile marker to track my growth and self-confidence because that's when it origin that's how it originated in self-confidence and I in every episode I'll just talk about something that I learned and how it it's growing me and challenging me to be better and so after the first official video I ended up going on a tangent about how much I love Jesus <laughs> <laughs> and that went viral. And I was like, y'all weren't supposed to see this. This wasn't <laughs> supposed to be something that, you know, was supposed to go anywhere. But um, as it began to grow around season number two, I started to, you know, recluse. I started to go back down. And I was like, yeah, I think we, I think we had a good run guys. <laughs> I think we did good. Let's, um, let's wrap this up. And yeah. my friend kept saying, like, no, you need to talk. You need to speak. People need to hear from you. And I even tried to cop it out by adding a lot of my friends. And though my I know my friends had a lot to say, I wanted to incorporate them because I didn't want to bear the the burden of like having to put my my business out there. And lo and behold, God, you know, he allowed it. One, because I do think my friends did have something to say, but also two. He uh went ahead and made me made me tell my business at the tail end. And those I think two two snippets from each one of those episodes went viral again. So every season there has always been something that I said that just 
went off and I have no idea. That's my thing. I don't but really no. have no formula. People have DM'd me and yeah. said, how did you contribute to such a successful, like, you know, podcast in such a short amount of time? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That's the Jesus. amazing and the beauty part about God, man. Where do you, where do your uh, podcast get shown? Spotify, is it IG, YouTube? All of the above. Oh, okay. I think it's Google Play, Spotify, Bus Route, Apple Podcasts, YouTube is where you can see the visuals. Um, and those are the top, I think the top four or five I can think of. Yeah. What what demographic do you got or what uh, what was your target audience or you just ain't had nothing? You just was just being transparent. We are overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. So was that really the thing that brought everybody in? For sure. I think that's where it started. But as I realized that my audience was growing, um, I just kept I just kept tabs on who I was talking to and what I realized now versus, you know, what I was aiming for yeah. was maybe 20, 25 to 35 year olds, like 25 to 44 year olds, something like in that, in that range. Um, and surprisingly, before I even thought about moving to New York, surprisingly, uh, a good margin of my audience is actually excuse me, in New York. Wow. So yeah, that's what the audience is right now. Wow. That's, a, that's just amazing. Um, How important would you say it is to you to stay grounded and stay close and making sure that you get filled up because you're pouring into all these people, because you're wearing so many hats, like how important is that? And how do you do that to make sure mm -hmm. that, you know, Kirsten is okay besides, you know, you giving and pouring everything out now you just ain't got nothing so what are you doing how do you handle that so this is some really good questions friend I ain't gonna hold you <laughs> um so what I have developed I guess routinely after every season no matter how many episodes there are I think whenever God just says like okay we're good on this one um I end up taking like a month no no less than about 30 days off from doing the podcast, from like recording, scheduling anything. And I just take that time to sit with God. Like I literally, I'm I'm ending a, a fast right now. And this is probably the first time that anybody has seen my face since the last season ended. And so I, I really want, want to be intentional, aim to be intentional about taking as much time necessary away from social media so I don't you know yield to anybody else's opinion or what or what they think I should speak on versus what is really on God's heart yeah mm -hmm. um can you speak on emotions um a lot of time um whether it's male or females because the devil is a liar men can have emotions and they can speak on it and all like that so um when it comes to emotions how would, what, what are words of wisdom or words of advice would you give to people that's trying to figure it out and trying to not hide their emotions? Because if you garner your thoughts and feelings, emotions don't let it out. The enemy can have it to where you have a hatred heart. And God says you can be angry, but sin not. So how would you um, how would you tell them to handle their emotions, feelings or frustrations with anything and not allow the enemy to torment them? So one thing I said in one of the episodes um, was it's okay to feel it. I think where I, I know I would go wrong is that whenever I experienced a very intense emotion, I would almost be afraid to feel it because I didn't know what was going to come. By the way, that was a great episode, but go ahead. Okay. <laughs> that's, where I, that's where I got it from, but go ahead. Go ahead. Glory to God. <laughs> but yeah, like when I when I had uh, intense emotions, it was almost as if I was afraid to feel it because if I felt it or if I addressed it in any way, that would make it real. And I don't know what would come from this emotion actually being realized, fully realized. But the truth that I am consistently learning is that when you feel it, when you reveal it, when you expose it, that's as far as it will ever go because your emotions stored up causes more damage, not just to others, but to you. Your When you store your emotions, it is literally like you are storing poison into your body because 
how did I explain it psychologically? Cause I got my degree in psychology. It was so profound when I read it, but in like literally, uh, I think physiologically or like within your n- neuro pathways or something like that, whenever you hold your emotions in your emotions, trigger hormones and hormones is actually a very real chemical in your body. And so when your body is trying to release hormones to express these emotions, why do you think whenever you get sad, you're, you're, you're moved to cry. Whenever you get angry, you're moved to yell. Like, like yeah. those natural responses, those are hormones. And so chemically speaking, when you hold those emotions in, your your hormones start to turn on you. Your hom- your hom- your hormones, it's almost like a gas, a toxic gas that starts to erupt on the inside of you because you're not doing anything to release it. And so yeah. you're wondering why you're having these outbursts. You're wondering how, why you're why you're so angry out of nowhere. Like, you know, somebody, you know, turn turn the microwave on and it beeped just on time. And all of a sudden you want to set the whole house on fire. It's because there are so many emotions that you have felt that the world has taught you to keep in rather than saying, no, I'm feeling this, whether it makes you uncomfortable or not, I'm going to feel it. I'm going to acknowledge how I feel and I'm going to speak truth to whatever this emotion is. Like let, let God be true in every man, emotion, anything be a liar. So no matter what my, I may feel, I know what the word of God says. So if I'm anxious, his word says, be anxious for nothing. Yeah. Pray to me, seek me in, in supplication and I will give you peace. Me. Lord, I feel like I feel overwhelmed. He said, cast all your cares on me because I care for you. When you combat your emotional, your emotions with the word of God, it's not saying to avoid your emotions. Please, everybody who is listening, stop Mm -hmm. trying to avoid your emotions because it is toxic. It is a toxic trait. It is a toxic thing that's happening on the inside of you. And it's making you sick. It is going to make you sick. Emotions are very spiritual, but yes, Whenever you address it, release it. If you got to cry, cry. If you got to yell, yell. If you got to clap a couple of times, do what you got to do. It's the same response with having joy. You want to laugh, express yourself. Don't let it, don't let it, don't let people make you feel uncomfortable for expressing yourself, but also cover that area with the truth, with the word of God, and it'll keep you at bay. So that's how I feel about emotions and once again, disclaimer, it's not to say I have it all figured out because even now Holy Spirit has to remind me, did you did you feel it? Did you yeah. did you acknowledge how you felt? Yeah. So yeah. And then as we cast our cares and concerns to him because he loves us and he cares, um, in our weakness, his strength mm-hmm. is made whole. So we don't have to worry about, you know, how it's gonna look. He wasn't gonna put nothing on us that we can't bear. A lot of times we have the victory, just like he used to say in the Bible. I'm giving you such and such. I'm you have right. the victory. The battle is won, but you still gotta go fight the war. But you still gotta yeah. show up. <laughs> yeah, you still gotta show up. And a lot of times, you know, fear could come in, even with social media, even with us Man. minister with our platform, you know. Uh, we have to stay close to God because sometimes I'd be like, man, uh, should I do this? And, you know, you know, and I know it's just the enemy he comes to still kill and destroy, but, you know, to kill us off our path, our focus, yeah. our purpose, you know, and, you know, on stool talk, we walk in our purpose on purpose, you know, being intentional and you have to be intentional, even in this walk, even in ministering. Can you speak to people that's using their platform? Like what's a couple of ways that using social media could be negative and positively even spreading the gospel and even ministering? So uh, I may not have too much to say about it unless you got something Holy Ghost. So my thing is, like I said, God tells me to take some time away from social media. I think because we will... I can't speak for everybody, but I think because there's such a drive for the numbers, getting your numbers up or chasing after the numbers and the followers, it can become intoxicating and it can really skew our viewpoints and our vantage points on what God is wanting to do in our, in our actual walk. And so I don't, I don't do the whole, like, you know, dishonoring people, pointing people out or just like, you know, make an example out of anybody. But my thing is if you keep your heart pure the 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 thing that you are desiring it will come to you i think for me one of the biggest testaments that i have especially in this about social media is whenever i took months off like you know the 30 days off the breaks i i ended up one of the reels they started to go more and more viral 
So I wasn't posting, I wasn't doing nothing with the algorithm algorithm, and all of a sudden stuff just started recycling. Mm. Hi, Daddy. Stuff started recycling and it started to go viral all over again. So it was just one of those moments where I witnessed God saying, no, you're not going to lose anything. You're not going to lose no momentum. Like you, you're doing my will. And so that was just one of the signs for me that me chasing after social media and me chasing people's opinions, it never matters. And actually one more thing I'll say is, um, when, when the setting boundaries video went viral, um, Apparently it got shared over quite a few platforms that um I'm still being made aware of. <laughs> but <laughs> um, but when I read the comments, if I wasn't careful, if the Holy Spirit didn't reel me in as quickly as he as he did or he tried, I would have given in to all of these comments about people and their perspectives and their opinions and trying to assume what it was that I meant versus what I said. It's, it's those things. And when we give in to people and not vetting, you know, testing the spirit by the spirit and not going back to truth and going back to our first love, I think it's very easy to become intoxicated by social media. Yeah. And uh, one thing that I always said, and I seen you shared this, I think it was in a video when you had first reached 10 K, how you said, you know, you were only trying to reach one person. That's the goal because that's what it is, you know, just reaching the one person, but then doing that, you're going to reach other people for you don't be looking at like, man, um, is people really understanding this? Am I reaching people, you know, but yeah. God is going to appoint and put the people who needs to hear the word that he's putting inside of us. But it's, unto us to become faithful and and one negative thing i will say is flesh not letting your flesh and this platform take over and having pride you know because pride comes before the fall and putting god first a lot of times we praying and we saying lord take me out this equation holy spirit come in have your way you know and do the things you do i know plenty of times you probably had something you wanted to do that you just studied and the holy spirit say uh uh here you go i want you to drop this <laughs> so, <laughs> when i say when i say i will be looking at it like oh this is a fire idea like yeah, when i just yeah. like it was like season three and i was like oh i want to do something i want to do something sensual i want to do something like along the lines of the slogan and stuff i'm gonna just say like you know i'm you know stop playing with me um i'm um i'm spiritual not soft or something like that something along like you know like you can get that. these hands but i don't fight I like it that. was weird it I was like a weird that. thing and and the lord said actually <laughs> but when i say he interrupts but it's always it's always for the greater good because if if I wouldn't have yielded to even that instruction. Nobody would have seen setting boundaries like setting boundaries wouldn't have never happened. Yeah. So as we close out, can you just whatever comes on your heart or the Holy Spirit gives you speak to the youth on whatever, whatever you feel led to. So one of the things that one, this has been amazing. And so one oh. of the things that um, was laid on my heart, I think sometime yesterday and just it's been reverberating over the last year is how God is really being intentional about who he is raising up in every sphere of influence. It's not just about the four walls of a church. And that's wild coming from me because I, all I knew was the church. And so God is really building up a lot of influential people, but these, these people of influence are going to be people that love him and that openly declare him. And this is how he will bring people back to him they will see the lives of those who who are openly yielded to him who are choosing to be transparent and it's not even just about like i said church but it's in the financial background in the governmental political in the educational field there are going to be so many people who see these these influential individuals and say like oh wow they really love god and god has brought them to such a level of success and i want to know like however however you know we reel them in but you know god has brought them to such a level of success and if i was looking for success and messed around and found god yeah he gets the glory yeah. so yeah. So that's my, that's how I've been seeing a lot of this. I know God is doing something special apparently, but my thing is I want to, I want to stay yielded. I want to stay committed to what he is doing. And when he says, stop, I'm done. Yeah. Um, but he's raising up this generation to do some, something mighty and something powerful. He is actually literally going to put people in positions that the 
older generation would have never believed that they were qualified for. But he's actually going to put people, like I said, these influential people in positions to change policies, to change systems and structures so that the people of God can raise, can rise up and be stronger than they've ever been before. So that's kind of how I feel about Man. all of the influence and the spheres. It's It plays such a bigger role than what we can ever think. Yeah, because we call to just more than the four walls. We call to go out in the streets and go in different territories because he has given us the victory, has given us dominion in those places, but we still got to go there for they can see this ain't just churchy. This person is actually out here yeah. Um, you know, doing the work on the field, on the grind, you know, winning souls, you know, and being able to, you know, be accessible to these people to let them know that God loves you no matter where you at. You know, God, God qualifies the unqualified. So, you know, I'm gonna come out there, whether it's feeding the homeless, whether it's helping people, whether it's just being a help, just being a, a answer to someone's question or someone's need, you know, and that's mm -hmm. where, you know, this upcoming year, you know, I'm, you know, praying and seeking God that I can be of help, you know, because of you know my love for the youth for my love just for God's people as well man because I don't want to be living my life and I'm portraying like I'm this way I want to be making everything line up according to his his will not mine but his will you know even in this thing absolutely and and for some reason one of the things that came to mind when you especially when you said like you know feeding the homeless and you know giving to the poor there's actually a scripture that there was this man that gave to the poor often they called it uh they called it giving alms to the mm -hmm. poor and there was this i think angel that came to him and said your alms your your giving has come up as a memorial before God. And mm -hmm. this has put, this has put him in remembrance of you. And so there are so many rewards that are waiting to be unlocked. There's so much provision and resources and funding that is waiting to be unlocked for those who have a heart for God's people, who has, who has a heart for the least of them. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's, it's a beautiful thing. Cause I even have a desire going into the new year of just really supporting transitional housing for human traffic victims. Yeah. I want to, you know, add value with philanthropy and canceling some, you know, paying off some student loan debts for, for those also who are looking to be debt free in the near future so they can get on with their life is one of those things that I really want to contribute to. And one thing I know about God is that if you have a plan, if you have a vision, if you make it plain, if you write it out, he will fund your vision. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly all we can ever ask for. Man, give uh well give the people your tags on where they can find you, where they can find your work at, your books and all of that, for they can, you know, inquire Oh, so <laughs> so you can follow me at uh personally at kirsten.s.lewis. That's K-I-E-R-S-T-O-N dot S dot Lewis, L-E-W-I-S. And if you want to follow the podcast, you can follow it at uh stop playing with me. No G in the plan. So stop playing with me podcast on Instagram. Um, every link to my books, my business um products it is in the link in either one of those bios so yeah that's that stop playing with her stop playing with her devil stop and honey if you want to if you want to follow the holy ghost you can follow him at the cross <laughs> you can follow right. him at the cross because right, right. we know we need him yeah yeah well this has been great we thank you for giving your time your opportunity your time is something you can't get back May God bless you exceedingly abundantly in this year. May he open up doors for you. May he put you around those people that you need to. May favor be in abundance in your finances, in your ministry. May you have fresh wine, new revelation. May you have the ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying, the eyesight to see the things that he wants you to see. May God just pour inside you. May you have a download in your spirit as you go win souls for God's people. And may God bless you for being so faithful. Thank you.
You <laughs> you welcome. Yeah, I love what you're doing, man. And you 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 doing it, man. I'm just honored. Like I really had to make sure I was prepared. That's why I was sitting here. Like this is, you know, it wasn't just some, another interview because I see the work you put in. I know the time, man. You know, I know your heart. And then even speaking with Jordan, you know, and she was like, Yeah, she's gonna be able to do it. I'm like, You sure? Like, you know, just I ain't looking at you like you popular, but I seen your work, your work shows, you know, and a lot of times God wants us to do good work. We would be you'd be able to be noticed by the works of our hands, you know, and you putting in that work, you know, and I know a lot of times it ain't easy. I know you probably go through things that only, you know, I know mm -hmm. you wrestle with things and you, you, God, why I do this, but he's giving you the strength and the capacity to keep on going and keep on pushing, you know, one day at a time, because you're needed in a time like this, you know, for what you got to say. And it's pure. Just, just look at all this, this selfless, like all the stuff you've given up to follow God, you know, that's just like the disciples. They gave up everything to go follow him. And that's what I see you doing, even knowing you're, you ain't thinking about no man. You ain't thinking about no money. You like, I'm all about you, God. I'm all about this. And when I'm doing that, all the things are going to fall into place as they supposed to, you know, just because you being obedient. Yeah. I I appreciate that. Yeah. I really do. I, I'm, I'm learning to be okay with like, you know, the affirmations and people wishing me well and yeah. just digesting it and receiving it and so I receive your love I thank you so so much for having me this okay. was I think one of those like I said this was the very first time because people have been reaching out to me about like you know being on their podcast and being on their platform or something of the sort but um I often just wanted to kind of put a pause to it because I didn't want to become oversaturated with like the whole people are just trying to get to know me and you know mm -hmm doing it for the wrong reasons. I didn't want to do that. So I I do believe that was something beautiful that came out of this conversation. And I do thank you for allowing me to be on your platform. I do think that if I can't encourage you, I do think that this platform, if you can remain consistent and not be discouraged by looking to the right or to the left, God is going to do the increase. We may want like, you know, X, Y, and Z for our goals, but God is the one who does the increase. So I will say, make your plans, whatever your plan is for 2024, go ahead and make your plans now for this podcast, for your guests, for your, your philanthropy, for your charity make your plans now because it's not going to be long before God literally blows your mind. And the same grace that he has on me or any other influential person, if I can even say that, he is not a respecter of person. Make mm -hmm. your plans and, and purify your heart, which I do believe it already is. And God is going to add the increase. That is what I prophesy to you. He will add the increase. I receive it. Thank you, man. <laughs> man, yeah. It, it's and it's going to work out. Yeah. It's going to work out. The holidays, for some reason, it got us, you know, it, it can make us feel a little, a little, little, <laughs> little touchy, but it's going to work yeah. out. It's going to yeah. work out just fine. Don't you worry about nothing. What is that? But don't you worry about nothing. Yeah. When I hear me by the spirit of God, don't you worry about nothing. Yeah. It's going to work out. You may not see how it's going to work out, but it is. And I can't wait to look back. I can't wait to look back on the next couple episodes cycling through and yeah. literally hear how God has changed your life for the better because yeah. of the moments like these. Yeah. Yeah, God willing, we'll be able to work together, ministering and, you know, sharing the gospel in this couple, in the upcoming new year. So, you know. Listen. Let God be true and let everybody else be alive. <laughs> I like your little saying. <laughs> I like them. Okay, take care. I ain't gonna hold you no longer. Well, all right. All right. Appreciate I love you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you too. And you have a good one. For okay. real. God bless. God bless.